So part three of Constitution of India. Now, what is part three? It talks about fundamental um, rights which we have. Right, fundamental rights that are guaranteed to us. But before starting with fundamental rights, there are few sections that like few articles are there which are um, important for us to know. One of which is Article 12 and Article 13. Okay, so Article 12 talks about definition that we would discuss in the next class. But for today, we would discuss what is Article 13. All right, so Constitution of India provides for like a bunch of fundamental rights. And before starting those fundamental rights, it just makes it very clear that whatever rights we are mentioning here, these rights would be like fundamental. Does not matter what you are entitled to enjoy those rights. Okay, so what would happen in case there is like a legislation which goes against the provisions of fundamental rights? That part is given in Article 13. Okay, so there is judicial review that we discussed in the last class. Vishnu, have you heard of this thing before? Judicial review, what is it? No, okay. So judicial review basically means, like this word is there, right? Judicial, as in it has to do something with the judiciary, right? That means higher courts, like Supreme Court and High Court, they have the power to review or revisit a legislation. If there is a legislation like IPC, Indian Penal Code, Indian Contract Act, judiciary can review or revisit the legislation to see if it is going against the provisions of uh, part three of constitution or not. If yes, they may consider that part as void, that this part will not be applicable because it's taking away the fundamental rights that are guaranteed to us. Okay, so there is this concept of judicial review. Now, how will judiciary say that this part is not applicable? What method would be applied by judiciary? That is explained by way of these two concepts, which is nothing but doctrine of severability and doctrine of eclipse. Okay, so fine, there is a legislation which we have and a certain part of that legislation violates the fundamental right, okay? One of the fundamental rights. Judiciary came to know about it. But now, how will judiciary declare that this is, no, like this is void, this would not be applicable? That process is explained in these two concepts, doctrine of severability and doctrine of eclipse. So anyone, have you heard of doctrine of severability? What is it all about? So doctrine of severability, like we use, right? Several, right? I have several options. As in, I have too many options, right? Same way, several means like something which can be separated, okay? When we say several options, that means you have separate, separate, too many options you have, right? Same ways when we use this concept, doctrine of severability, it means doctrine of severability or separability. Something that we can separate from one another. All right. So this concept we can understand with the help of this case, A.K. Gopalan versus State of Madras. So we will see what is doctrine of severability all about. The basis of this doctrine is uh, in wording to the extent of inconsistency or contravention. Like we have understood, right? If there is a certain provision given in part three of constitution, the legislations that we have should not violate or go against part three, right? But if there is a certain provision in Indian Contract Act, which violates provisions given in part three, how do we consider this as void to the extent of inconsistency or contravention? As in, if there is one section which violates fundamental rights given in part three, only that certain section should be considered as void. Okay, we should not consider that this entire Indian Contract Act itself is void because other parts are fine. They are working well in the society. 
So what should be considered as void? It is only to the extent of inconsistency or contravention. If there is one section which is violating, consider that section as void. If there are there is like a chapter, entire chapter that is inconsistent, consider that entire chapter as void. But you don't need to consider this entire legislation as void. That is the understanding for this like theory which is being applied. Okay, so take for example this is one entire legislation in blue color. Okay, so this is one entire legislation. In this entire legislation, there is just one part. Okay, this one section is there, which is violating the provisions of part three of constitution. Okay, in such a case, judiciary has to see whether this certain part which is there, it is separable from the remaining legislation or not. Okay, if this certain part can be separated, can be taken out from the remaining legislation. And even after that, this legislation is making some sense. Other provisions of the legislation can still be applied. In such a case, let this remaining legislation be as it is. Just take out this part, which is violating part three of constitution. Okay, so which means doctrine of severability or separability. When there is one part which violates fundamental rights, try to see if this part can be separated or can be taken out or not. If yes, just consider that part to be void. The remaining part can remain as it is. Okay, is this part clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But it's not always the case that you take out a provision, remaining legislation will still make a sense, right? Sometimes it may happen that there is like one legislation, there is just one section which is very important. And to be frank, that is the only section which, like, which makes sense. The entire legislation talks about some procedure, some appointment of officer, this, that and everything, okay? In the entire legislation, in this entire legislation, there is just one section which talks about something. Remaining are just like process, how to appoint this person, how to appoint that person, like that. Okay. And we came to know that in this legislation also, that important section, like the only section which is there, that section is also violating part three of constitution. Again, we need to see whether that specific section can be separated from the remaining legislation or not. Okay, but when we tried to separate that one specific provision, we came to know that this remaining legislation is just useless. It's not making any sense. So in such cases, what do you do with that legislation which is of no use, right? So in such a case, consider the entire legislation as void. That means whenever judiciary has to see whether certain legislation is going against fundamental rights or not, judiciary will also see whether that provision, which is violating part three, can be separated from the remaining legislation or not. If yes, just take out that certain provision, let the remaining legislation be as it is because it is serving the purpose, but it might not be possible in every single case. So if it cannot be separated, then consider the entire legislation as void. Okay, so this is what the concept is all about, doctrine of severability or separability. Okay, if it's possible, just separate it out, just take out that provision. If not, entire legislation we would consider as void. Okay, is it clear? Yes, 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 So relating to this, we have this case as well, which is A.K. Gopalan versus State of Madras. So there is something called as preventive detention law. What is preventive detention law? Anyone aware of it? Preventive detention law.
What is detention, by the way? Number one, detention. Detention is like detaining someone, right? Like keeping in custody, keeping someone confined, right? Detaining someone. When we say preventive detention, ideally what happens? That is the law. We go against that law. We violate it. And after that, we are punished for it, right? We commit the crime. After that, only we are made answerable for that. But there are some laws which are called as preventive detention law. As in, we are we are detained just in order to prevent us from committing a crime that means there is a possibility or there is a you know like there is a possibility that in future we may commit a certain crime for that they are arresting us beforehand only like before committing the crime itself they are arresting us so that we can be prevented from committing that crime Okay, so there are certain legislations under which a person may be arrested like that. There is one Armed Forces Special Powers Act, which is also nothing but a preventive detention law. Just if like an armed officer feels that your actions, behaviors are not proper, might be you are a terrorist, you may commit some wrong, they can straight away arrest you without any proof or anything. Okay, that is nothing but preventive detention laws. So there is one act called as Preventive Detention Act of 1950. Under this legislation, this leader of Communist Party was arrested. Okay, and he moved to the court saying that my right to personal liberty is being violated. I am being arrested. Okay, and while deciding this case, court felt that there is this one section, like otherwise this preventive detention is fine which is applicable, we have legislations for that. So as such, there is no problem with the entire legislation. Preventive detention legislation is fine, but there is one section, which is section 14. That section is having like problem. Okay, so this entire legislation otherwise is fine. Just there is one section that is section 14, which is having issues. So they said that this entire legislation, right? hence the same was declared as void. Well. Entire legislation was not considered as void. There is a problem with section 14 only. So let's consider only section 14 to be void. Okay, so this is nothing but doctrine of severability was applied. That can we separate out or take out section 14 from this legislation preventive detention act or not? If we are taking out that provision, still is the legislation making sense or not? If yes, fine, just consider that one section as void, remaining provisions would be as they are. Okay, is it clear doctrine of separability and separability with the case? Vishnu, are you able to follow? Uh -huh. Clear. Sir, can you explain one second case law? Case law, okay. In Kashmir, same it's uh, applicable, right? Um, sorry. In Kashmir, uh, arrests are made uh, uh, in the, this article. Um, actually, not this article. Actually, this Armed Forces Special Powers Act is also applicable in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, many of the northeastern states. So mostly arrests happen under this legislation. And there are actually a few other the preventive detention laws as well. So you never know. There may be arrests under whatever legislations are there. Right? They are very much like that. So this uh, doctrine, did you understand, Vishnu? Yeah, ma'am, but case law. Case law, no. okay. So like we have mentioned that only one part, if we can separate out, just remove that part. What happened in this case is, there was a preventive detention law, as in before committing a crime itself, if they suspect that there is a possibility that you may commit a crime, only based on that possibility they can arrest you, they can detain you. So in this case also, A.K. Gopalan, who was leader of Communist Party, was detained under provisions of this legislation. 
and then he went to court and he said that my right to personal liberty is being violated i have not done anything wrong as such but still i am being arrested i am being detained so while addressing this right court said that this entire legislation preventive detention act 1950 otherwise this legislation is fine but there is one section in the entire legislation there is one section which is section 14 only that section is having problem okay only this one section is having problem so what we will do is we will consider like we would apply this doctrine of severability we would separate out section 14 and we would say that section 14 is void but the entire legislation it will remain as it is only Okay. Is okay. it is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, same way, there is another concept which is called as doctrine of eclipse. What is eclipse? Common, common day use. Solar eclipse. What is it? Covering of of an object. Covering yes. covering of an object. <laughs> Correct. Same way. This is the doctrine. Okay, doctrine of eclipse, covering of a certain thing. Now, what will cover what? That we need to see. So, doctrine of eclipse says that any law inconsistent with fundamental rights is not totally dead. When we say that this certain law, this certain provision, it is violating provisions of Part Three. So, this is void. This is not applicable. When we say like that. we do not mean that this entire law or the section in itself is like completely dead okay it's not dead the provision is still there okay if we say that this certain provision is going against the constitution this provision is not as such dead but the provision is still there but what happens is it is overshadowed okay they are overshadowed by fundamental rights so this light that you can see from behind just consider it to be a legislation okay there was a legislation which was visible to us but now court has said that this legislation is violating our fundamental rights okay this legislation is violating our fundamental rights so this black dot that you can see consider that as part 3 so what happened has part 3 has overshadowed it as in what we can see from the outside is we can see part 3 we cannot see the light which is there inside it right so this the thing which is behind that is not completely dead that is still there but it is overshadowed by part 3 so when it's overshadowed what can we see we can just see part 3 so part 3 would be applicable and this provision would just remain like that only in the background it's not dead it is there like in the background it's there because we cannot see it it's not applicable right what we can see we can see part 3 so part 3 would be applicable but still this legislation is there uh, uh, like in the background okay so doctrine of eclipse basically means that any law inconsistent with fundamental rights is not totally dead but they are overshadowed by fundamental rights and there may be a possibility like we know constitution is like subject like law itself is dynamic it keeps on changing today there may be a law tomorrow it may be changed day after tomorrow again it may be reversed changes keep on happening right so that is why they have said that in case there are any changes on fundamental rights okay today we are saying that this is what fundamental rights is tomorrow we would say no this is what fundamental rights is day after tomorrow again we may go back to the same position right today we are saying something tomorrow something else day after tomorrow again we may come back to the same position that's why they are saying in case there are any changes on fundamental rights if there is an amendment and law is not violating any of the remaining fundamental rights right and whatever law was there in the background 
this law is not violating any other fundamental right, just it was violating one right, which is now being changed. So that means at present, law is not violating any of the fundamental rights, right? Because there was just one provision which was being violated and that is also now being modified by way of an amendment. So in such cases, what happens is law can again become operative. That means if this part three, we remove it from here, we can again see the legislation. That means legislation may again become applicable. Okay, just like how it happens in case of like solar eclipse, right? The sun would be behind and then once the shadow goes off, we can again see the sun. We again get the sunlight. Same ways, legislation is there is just overshadowed by part three. There may be a possibility that at the future stage, it may be removed also. If it's removed, we can see the legislation. It would be applicable to us. Okay, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> so we will see one case also, okay, that explain this um, concept. What is doctrine of eclipse? Now the same thing, exact same thing happened over here. All right. So now when constitution became applicable, Constitution of India when it came into force. 26th January 1950. 26th of January 1950. But before that also there were some legislations, there were some laws which were applicable, right? So those laws might be violating the constitution also, right? So what happened in this case is uh, Vikaji Narayan versus State of Madhya Pradesh. It's a very important case to understand doctrine of eclipse. Okay, what happened here is this case is with regard to application of pre-existing laws, as in laws which are pre-existing, as in before constitution came, from that time only this law is in existence, this law is being applicable. Okay, so this explains doctrine of eclipse. What happened is in Madhya Pradesh, right, there was a legislation, there was a law which is called as CP and Berar Motor Vehicles Amendment Act 1948. Okay, so this is a legislation which is applicable in Madhya Pradesh, CP and Berar Motor Vehicles Amendment Act 1948. That means this law was in operation since before like 1950, right? Before constitution became applicable. So under this legislation, under the provisions of this legislation, what happened is it authorized state government, state government of Madhya Pradesh to take up entire motor transport business to the exclusion of motor transport operators. As in this motor transport business would be completely uh, like controlled and dominated by the government. All right, whatever provisions they want, they can completely say that these all provisions relating to motor transport business, we are keeping it under our control to the exclusion of motor transport operators. Okay, they would not be given like in today, if we consider electricity, right, we see that it's mostly controlled by the government only. Same ways, there was this elect, uh, motor transport business, which government had control based on this legislation. Now it was working fine, 1948, 1950, it worked fine. But what happened is the provisions, though valid when enacted, when this law was made, it was valid, it was operating, it was working fine. But when constitution became applicable in 1950, constitution of India guarantees us a fundamental right under article 19, Clause 1, Clause Z of Constitution. Okay. Under this, we are given the freedom to enter into any trade, profession, business, vocation, etc. Like whatever business we want to do, we are free to do that. That is like a fundamental right given to us. Okay. So, Constitution gave us this fundamental right that you can do whatever business you want to do. 
Now, because of this legislation, right? Because of this legislation, motor transport operators were not able to enter into motor transport business. Even if they were willing, they were not able to enter into that business. So they filed a case in the court, right? Because we have the fundamental rights are like guaranteed to us. We can directly go to Supreme Court. They filed a case saying that this legislation, CP and Berar Motor Vehicles Amendment Act 1948, this legislation is taking away our fundamental right under Article 191G. It should be considered as unconstitutional and void. Okay, like that case was filed in the court. And court applied this concept of judicial review, right? They reviewed the legislation, they revisited the legislation. And they said that, yes, this certain provision, which gives like exclusive authority to the state and do not allow uh, motor transport authorities to get involved in the business, it violates their right. So this certain provision would be considered as unconstitutional. All right, so what happened is that certain section which was violating, it was overshadowed by part three of constitution, article 191G of constitution. And the section of CP Berar Motor Vehicles Act was not applied. But there was an amendment, like by way of the first constitution amendment, right? Like some sub clauses were added in Article 19. That is, artic Clause 6 of artic uh, Article 19, which said that whatever fundamental rights are guaranteed to us, they are not absolute. There may be some limitations. Same way as when we talk about right to enter into any trade, profession, business, vocation, there are certain areas where if government wants, they can monopolize any business. Like if government feels that electricity is something that should be completely under control of government, they can say that this would be taken care of by government only. If they feel water supply is something that they should take care of, they would say this is like our monopoly. We would not allow some, you know, like private individuals or uh, dealers to enter into this business. Right, same ways constitution said that it's fine if government feels certain matters, they want monopoly, that is completely fine. You don't have absolute right under this article. Okay, so that means in a way, we again went back to the same provision. That means CP Berar Motor Vehicles Act, it's no more unconstitutional because whatever provision was there in constitution that itself was changed, itself was altered, right? So again, this provision became applicable wherein government had the right to um, like take up this entire motor transport business to the exclusion of tra motor transport operators, right? This is nothing but doctrine of eclipse. There is some provision being applied, working fine, if at any point in time it violates part three of constitution, part three will overshadow it. And this overshadowing thing would remain unless and until we have a constitutional amendment removing this part three. If it's removed, this law can again be applied. If not, it cannot be applied. Okay, is it clear or is it confusing? Clear. Okay. Uh, Vinay, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Vishnu? Yeah, ma'am, it's clear. So these are the concepts which we have under Article 13. Okay. So what is Article 13 all about? It says that apart from Constitution, like fine, Constitution, Part 3, providing for fundamental rights, guaranteeing those fundamental rights. But there may be a situation wherein, because in India, we have thousands of other legislations talking about so many different things. So there remains a possibility that at any point in time, some other legislation, some other provision may take away this fundamental right. 
So in order to ensure that does not happen, we have these concepts. Judicial review, wherein higher judiciary, Supreme Court and High Court can review or revisit a legislation to see if it's fine or is it violating any provision of part three. Same ways we have doctrine of severability, which means whether a certain provision can be separated, can be taken out from the remaining legislation. If yes, why not do that? Why to make the entire legislation void? Just take out that one provision. Same thing happened in AK Gopalan versus State of Madras, wherein only section 14 was taken out from the remaining legislation. Same thing, we have doctrine of eclipse, which says whatever provision you are considering as void, it would be overshadowed by part three until and unless there is an amendment which, you know, like changes that certain provision of part three of constitution. In this case, Vikaji Narayan versus State of Madras, it's a very good example of this doctrine, doctrine of eclipse, wherein a certain provision was overshadowed by part three, and just a year later, because of the first constitutional amendment in 1951, it was again made applicable. That there is no problem with this provision. It can again be applied over here. Okay. All right, so this provision, right, part of uh, article 12 and 13, they give us like an understanding on what the fundamental or like part three of constitution, okay? Because there are these cases which are very much important for us to understand the concept, um, right? So you can just go through this cases and also this part because it's like just three articles which you have in um, unit two of the syllabus, right? So there may be a question on, or uh, these things as well. So you can go through the cases as well. And for article 12 also, to understand it, we need to take help of some uh, cases, okay? So I don't want to like discuss two articles in one class because there are a lot many cases in article 12 also. So we will continue with article 12 in the next class, okay? You can just go through article 13. If there are any doubts, you can let me know. We will have a discussion next class, okay? Mm -hmm.